Hey folks, welcome to this Geometry Nodes Quick Tips video. The idea is that I want to be able to produce multiple different variations of an object in a node tree, join them all together, and then push them out through a point instance node. And if this was a collection from, you know, just general other objects, I could use that pick instances tick box on the instance node to pick at random for each point. So what I wanted to do is basically come up with a method for doing this. And Astrid dropped one in the chat yesterday. Huge thank you for doing that. Like this is why the community is so important. It's all about sharing ideas and coming to solutions. So I wanted to put together a quick video just to show you what that is. I'm going to jump into Blender here. I'm going to make a new cube. It can be anything. If you're interested in this map, this is the node mini map. Very good new add-on. Uh, I'm going to just delete my group input. Let's make a few different variations. We're going to go with a just a general cube, an icosphere, and I'll also add a cone. Here we go. And maybe I'll do a cylinder as well. So cone and cylinder. Let me make these a little bit smaller just because the cubes aren't too big. There we go. Something like this. We have some variations. Now the idea is that I can join these together and on the other side pick which one I want to use. Now the way that we're going to do this is by essentially holding an attribute in this case the id so each point will have an id assigned to it and after we instance we can delete all of the geometry which is not the specific one let's assign an id and we need to do this manually so geometry set id so this is my cube i'm just going to set an id and i'm going to use the input integer value so this one is going to be zero and I'm basically just going to do the same for the icosphere cone and cylinder. Let's duplicate these down. My icosphere is going to be one. My cone is going to be two and my cylinder is going to be three. So I have four values here, zero, one, two, three. And now I'm going to join them together just like this, right? So now I have one thing that I can instance. Let me make something to instance on. I'm going to just grab a grid here, grab a point instance node, sorry, distribute points and then point instance. And now I can just instance my joined geometry. All right then. So if we look at this, we can see that we have everything and in wireframe as well, you can see everything is here, but it is clipping through itself. So I need to find a way of creating a random value per point. And to do this, we're going to use a little attribute transfer trick, which is possible with the scale instances node. So you're just going to have to bear with me. I recommend following along and just copy what I do and then try and understand what's going on afterwards. I'm going to scale my instances. And if I view this, it's important they're still instances. I can scale these to zero. So these will go down to small. I will change it to zero in a moment. I just want you to still be able to see them just to help us visualize what's going on. And then after this, I'm going to realize these instances. So instances, realize instances. So now what we have is real geometry. What I can now do is actually transfer an attribute by the position. So I'm going to use an attribute transfer and I'm interested in transferring an attribute from my points. So this is my target. And in this case, it can either be an index, like a, a value per point, or it can be something like a random value. So this is where you're going to be able to pick essentially like your instance index, whether you put in a random value with white noise, or if you put in like an actual counting index that you can specify. In this case, I'm going to use white noise just so that we have it random. By default, this will be taking the position. So each point, which is just the singular position in space, will have a single white noise value between zero and one. Now we need to change this to nearest instead of nearest face interpolated because points do not have faces. And now we need to capture this on our scaled down instances. So after these have been realized, we can put different values on each one. So we'll use an attribute capture on here and I will just capture that attribute like so. So now we have it captured on our scaled down instances. And I'm gonna scale this down to zero now You'll see they disappear, but it's just because they're all contained into a singular point. Now, in parallel to this, because I still want my original meshes, I'm actually going to realize these original ones. So this is the size and the geometry that I actually want, but it has the same vertex order and indices and number of vertices as our scaled down ones. It's just that they are not scaled down. So you couldn't scale it down, transfer it, and then scale them back up because once something is scaled down to zero, that's kind of, you've lost that data, but we can do an attribute transfer from our scaled down ones by index to our regular ones. And it's all going to match up because our vertex order is the same. So I can take another transfer attribute on this top row. We're going to be transferring a float 
or if you were doing indices, you could transfer an integer. Instead of nearest, we can change this to index and we're working on the points. So this is all fine. And now this is what we can use to basically create a mask to delete geometry. So carrying on here, what I want to do is I want to know how many of these I have. Like what does our white noise value need to go up to? Right now it's a zero to one value but we want it to be zero to three. So we need to times it by three. So let's grab a utility math node in here, just like this. And I'm gonna multiply by three. This is our maximum value over here. And then I'm also going to just use a round node just to make sure that we don't have any of those in between values. So a utility float to integer node. I'm gonna leave it set to round. This is fine for what I want. And we can find out where the ID because this is how we stored the data, where the ID is not equal to the value on the points. And then we basically just use that to delete that selection and it will leave the value of the points. Let me show you how this is gonna work. So we can use a compare floats. We can find out where it is not equal because we want everything else to the input ID, just like so. And now I can use a geometry, delete geometry with this as my selection. And there we go. Amazing. We literally have just solved the problem of being able to create multiple things within a single node tree and scatter them at random on generated points. This is not an elegant solution. I'll put my hands up and say that. But for those of us who are taking part in November, this is a solution that we can lean on immediately. And for those who want to just be working in 3.0 rather than jumping into the 3.1 alpha, this is going to work for you even after the proper functionality is added to 3.1. There we go. This is a little Geometry Nodes 102, I guess. It's not a basics video. This is a little bit more of an advanced technique, but hopefully this is going to help some folks make fully procedural stuff for this month. Hope this is useful and I'll catch you in the next one.